This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Caradimos, and today what we're going to do is take a look at a equation of a conic section. It's written in general form. We're going to transform it into standard form. Okay, first of all, what's general form? Well, general form is when you have the uh, equation written in a form that doesn't have parentheses and it kind of looks like a polynomial. All right, well, first of all, I'd like to identify what this uh, conic section is. Well, if it only had one squared term, it would be a parabola. Okay, so it's not a parabola. If it was a circle, the coefficients of the squared terms would be equal, since they're not equal in value. It's not a circle. All right, uh, if it's an ellipse, the coefficients of the squared terms will have the same sign. All right, well, they don't have the same sign, so we're left with a hyperbola. It's got to be a hyperbola because the squared terms have, the coefficients have different sign. Uh, all right, so now that we know it's a hyperbola, we're going to go through all the steps, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Well, the first thing we have to do is lump all of our x terms together. So I'm going to put that, I'm going to put the 100x, uh, let's see, now I'm going to lump together the 36y squared plus the 360y, leaving a little space, and I'm also going to add 100 to both sides. I'm going to get that 100 over on the other side. Okay, so I lumped the x's with the x's, the y's with the y's, and I got rid of everything else put on the opposite side of the equation. All right, now in order for us to continue, the coefficient of our square term has to be 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this negative uh, 25. So I'm thinking negative 25 times negative 4 will be uh, give me back to 100 there. Okay, so if I multiply these two, I would get back to 100. Multiply these two, I'd get back to that. So I factored out the negative 25. Now I'm going to factor out the 36 so I can get just a y squared here. All right, so if I divide this by 360, it's 10. It does work if I multiply. I'll get back to 360. All right, so the reason why we factored out that number to get a 1 coefficient of our squared term being a 1 is because we can't complete the square until that coefficient is equal to 1. So that was a mandatory step to factor out whatever number is in front of your squared term. All right, now comes the step where we calculate what the, this value has to be to create a perfect square trinomial. Okay, in order to do that, there are some steps that you can do, and I'm going to do those steps on the side. So, for instance, like the negative 4, what you do, and I'm going to just show this down here, which I'll probably erase afterwards, but this is the step. You take that term, the term in front of your x, you divide it by 2. Okay, once you divide it by 2, then you take that value and you square it. And there you go. So now I know this value has to be a 4. So I'm going to put a plus 4 there. Okay, and I'm going to underline it so that I come back to that in a second. So I'm just figuring out what that number is at the moment. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing now for the y value. Okay, so now for the y value, I do the same thing. I take the middle term, the term in front of the y, the non-squared term. I take that number, I divide it by 2. And then I take that value that we just got and square it. Okay, so that's the value I'm going to put right here, and it creates a perfect square trinomial. Okay, now I'm going to erase these numbers. I don't need these anymore. All right, so now that I erased that, I am now going to progress. Now, when I added the 4 here, I didn't really add 4 to the left side of this entire equation. Nope. Because I have this number here in front, I really added negative 25 times 4. Right? If I did the distributive property, it would be negative 25 times 4. That's negative 100. 
so that I really added negative 100 to the left side of this equation. So to balance that, I'm going to put a minus 100 here on the left side. All right, likewise, when I put a 25 here, I didn't add 25 to the left side of this equation. I added 36 times 25. Okay, so I need to balance out the left side of this equation. I can't just go around adding 36 times 25, which ha ha actually happens to be 900. So 36 times 25, I landed up adding 900 to the left side, so I have to now also add 900 to the right side to balance things out. Whatever I add to the left side of an equation, I have to also add to the right side. So now my equation is still balanced. Okay, now that I've balanced my equation, I'm going to play clean up here. All right, well, first of all, I created perfect square trinomials. That is a perfect square. I know because I created it. This is a perfect square. I know because we created it. Now I'm going to clean up the right side. The 100 minus 100, that cancels, so you're left with just 900. All right, so what is this as a perfect square? Well, it's always half the middle term. So it's x minus 2. Here, half the middle term is 5. There you go. I just created perfect squares. All right, now that I created perfect squares, I now have to get this into the form of what a hyperbola looks like. So a hyperbola always has a 1 here on the right side. So to get a 1, yep. I'm going to divide everything by 900. So that means I'm going to divide every term by 900. Okay, so if I divide this side by 900, well, that means I've got to reduce these things. If I reduce, actually, if you notice this, I could divide this by 25, and I could divide this by 25. Okay, so if I divide this by 25, uh, I'm going to get 36. So I took 900 divided by 25, I get 36. All right, here I'm going to reduce these guys. It turns out I could divide this by 36, and I could divide this by 36. And when I divide that by 36, I get 25. What a coincidence. Okay, so now that I've played clean up there, you'll notice that this fraction now turns out to be negative x minus 2 over 36 plus, and this is y plus 5, quantity squared, all over 25 equals 1. Now, it doesn't quite look exactly like a hyperbola. Now, remember, a hyperbola has a minus here in the middle. So the only way I can get this minus here in the middle is I'm actually going to swap the placement of these two terms. In other words, I'm just going to reorganize the left side. Instead of having this number plus that number, I'm just going to switch their position. All right, and I'm going to lower this so that we can uh, see a little bit lower. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. So in other words, I'm going to write the y plus 5 first. And then I'm going to put the x minus 2 second. And since this x minus 2 term was the negative, I'm going to put that in front. Now it looks like a hyperbola. Definitely this is the standard form. So now I have this hyperbola in standard form. And there you go. I could graph this now. I could find the center. I could find out how far left and right from the center the, bo the size of the box goes. And I could also determine because the y term is first. I know this is an up and down hyperbola and so on. I could find foci and so on. All right, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. And uh, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our other interactive quizzes, lessons, and videos. Take care.